about time. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. So people were concerned for Sonny Hostin after they had a guest on the show, on The View. Uh, Megan Tui, a journalist from The New York Times, who also has a book out about Harvey Weinstein and did a deep dive into that investigation. The book is called She Said. And during that appearance, you could tell she had a really bad cough. This was one of the most fascinating pieces of this part of, of your movie. Harvey Weinstein barged into the New York Times offices. Can you imagine? Towards the end of your investigation to try and intimidate you and shut down the story. He's a large, imposing man. Uh, were you ever scared of him? And how far did those intimidation tactics go? Yeah, so there is. I'm so sorry for Everybody my coughing that, that right now. Um, the little baby who gave me, <laughs> with whom I had postpartum depression, has now been giving me just like a rotation of cold. Of so. <laughs> It happens, man. Okay. You know people be so scared to cough nowadays. Though, Especially after okay. COVID. And I'm a person that gets bronchitis. I get seasonal bronchitis, so that happens to me. Okay? It happens. All right? It's just a cough, people. When I tell you people who go in, like, oh, my God. Why? <laughs> they cough? You're coughing right now. Sometimes you might swallow wrong. In her case, she told you what it was. She got a little something, something I from the baby. I swallow wrong. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. You know, sometimes you do swallow wrong, but pause. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh, my goodness. Well, you said but, it. Tell me how but, I swallow wrong, Amy. Yo, shut up. No, 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 no. Since we here and well. Logan is listening, tell me why I swallow wrong. Because any, any way I try to explain it is going to sound crazy. But well, you tell know, sometimes me. when the spit goes down or your flow goes down, you know what? Forget it. Forget it. I'm not playing this game. I can this tell you're good at what you do. I'm not playing this game. Yo, don't drop no bombs. King. A king. Get a king is speaking, damn it. Let him talk. Or should Get I say a queen? A queen is speaking, damn it. Let her talk. Oh my God, I hate y'all. You done, Envy? I'm done. I'm finished. So go ahead with the spit. <laughs> no, go ahead. You done, Queen? <laughs> I'm, I'm done. You know, ever, I knew ever since I asked about Angie this morning, this would lead, uh, lead <laughs> this to the type of conversation going. that we're having right now. Uh, Goodness all right. gracious. Well, let's talk about Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Uh, they are releasing a cannabis gummy collection together. My wife came up with this holy ear situation, right? And I just thought it wouldn't be right if Evander wasn't involved. It's a real limited edition with a biggest <clears throat> company in the world, and he deserves it. You know, I'm not poverty stricken, but I can use a buck like everybody else. And I said, listen, let's just let them um, make some money out of this. Let's some kind of make this negative thing something positive, and we can laugh at everybody because it was a joke. Well, that uh, I guess the big thing with me was that I was glad that for with the product itself that it it helped people. And if it's going to help people to be better, then that's what life is really about. I respect it, because when I first uh, saw that, that was a while ago when they first announced that. I thought that to myself, it was, it was a Vander's ear. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't so, Mike Tyson's ear, it was a Vander's ear. It's cherry pie punch flavored. And so Evander said it put him to sleep, and he thinks the product is great. Well, I want some. Send some up here, somebody. All right? <laughs> Mike Bites. Somebody from Mike Tyson's podcast, Hot Box, and send us some, send yeah, some of the medibles. Some. I'd love Absolutely. to try them. Okay. All right, now let's talk about SNL star Chris Red. He actually has to have surgery after being attacked. All right, now he's scheduled to undergo surgery today to finish the job of permanently repairing his nose that was busted. If you guys recall, here's what he said about the night that he was punched outside of the comedy club. I was just got done uh, texting my cousin who's in Olive Tree above the cellar so I could go uh, eat some of his fries before I hit the stage real quick for my first set of three. And uh, as I put my phone in my pocket, this, this man hit me in the face with uh, something. I thought it was brass knuckles because of the way it cut my nose to the bone. And I, I've been, I've been, I've been like boxing for like years, so I know. I, first of all, I've taken a punch to the face before, so it, it wasn't like terrifying. But what was uh, worrisome is, is is how much blood was coming out of my face. I mean, it was. I mean, look, I got two fractures in my nose and a, and a, and a fracture in my cheek. It was safe to assume I was hit with something, but dude just hit me and ran off, man. And I and I was sitting there. I fell down so fast, I didn't even know I fell until I looked at the footage. Wow. Damn. Well, yeah, so now he is going to have to be under general anesthesia for about two to three hours. A plastic surgeon who specializes in getting his nose back into the correct place is going to have to oversee the operation. And so he's not trying to change anything about his appearance. I know, Envy, you're getting a nose job. 
But I am this is not just getting for him a to nose get job. his nose back to its original form. I'm sending Chris healing energy. I just still am perplexed as to why he needed to eat his cousin's fries. Why couldn't he get his own fries before I think he it was went a on joke. stage? His cousin was there. He wanted to, you know, come and say what's up to his cousin. Takes, you know, steal some of your family members' food and keep it moving. Mm. All right, and shout out to Lil Baby. November 13th is now recognized as Dominic Lil Baby Jones Day in okay. the city of Atlanta. He got a proclamation from the Atlanta City Council on Sunday in celebration of his successful career and his generous philanthropy. Did y'all see that video of the woman um, who was cutting hair? And yeah, he gave her, yeah, and he gave her a bunch of money. And yep. she was just crying. We don't know the exact amount of money that he gave her, but it was something that he did like off camera. She dope. just decided to tell her story. But when I tell you it was life changing for her and just to see how much he can affect somebody with his generosity. Now that he's was really amazing. a good dude. He's really a good dude. He's a superstar, but still a humble, down to earth good dude. So much pressure when you get your own day too though. I mean, and I think it's because of uh Trade of Truth, because Trade of Truth does so much in and on his day and around his, his day. day. Yep. So he does so the whole much, week. There's so much pressure yeah, when you a got a day. He got he camels. Remember he had all that? I'm telling yep. you. I do I do something every year for Angela Yee Day. That is true. Yep. Yeah, I do a, a free event for, for uh, in Brooklyn for everybody mm -hmm. here and anybody who wants to come, but it's nowhere near the level of what Trade the Truth does. Yeah, but still, you just try to do what you can. I hope it grows and continues to grow. Yeah, I do, I do charity stuff around my day in South Carolina. Like, that's usually when I do, like, my annual... You know, uh, back to school, a book drive, book bag mm -hmm. drive, and stuff like that. Yeah, and I so that's think what this, you should do. I think you should do charity. Yeah, whatever you can day. do. We um, mm -hmm. partnered with We Belong Here with the Joe and Clara, uh, Clara and Joe uh, Foundation here, the owners of the Nets, and they did a, a gave to five different organizations in conjunction with that. So that was amazing. Mm -hmm. That's a good feeling to be Definitely able to do is. that. So, mm -hmm. but a lot of people get their own day and really don't do anything, which is fine, mm -hmm. too. That's what I said. It's a lot of it pressure. It ain't like you asked for it. They just gave it to you. And it's usually on, like, a random day that you're not even thinking about throughout the year <laughs> that you get there, you know? Yeah, as, yeah. It's good to be around something. When it's around your birthday or, like, nope, it's or, when it's, or when it's around something that you're already doing, it's, it, it makes a lot of sense. And here it's mm -hmm. around the West Indian American Day Parade. So mm -hmm. that's... Um, it's always around Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. uses. Yep. All right, well, that is your rumor report.